you won both SNDs against the um against Toronto and you okay. won the SND against uh, Minnesota as well, uh, but the series went to Minnesota, and this was a rematch, of course, of Los Angeles. Yep. What even even the uh, dedicated servers aside, take me into your observations of that matchup. Uh, whether it was motivation for Minnesota having lost to Dallas in the championship match the last tournament, or maybe some adjustments they made. What are some of your takeaways from that matchup against Minnesota? Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's an interesting matchup. We kind of, we match up to them in similar ways that FaZe does. We're a very aggressive team and they're a very slow team. They rely a lot on positioning while we rely on a lot of kind of micromanaging aggressive situations to try and get them out of those positions. Um, so we kind of play into their game a little bit, which is kind of, in, in most cases, if we get our kills, we'll win the game. But if they outslay us, then we're going to lose the games nine times out of 10. Um, and that's kind of what happened today is they just outslayed us in both hard points to an extent that just isn't manageable for us to win the game the way we're playing it. Um, I think, I, I can't remember, I think it's like 23 or 24 kills outslay in the first hard point, and there's probably something similar in the second hard point. And when you play a game against a team that's playing slow and that's just playing for positioning, then it, if you allow them to get that much space on the map without killing them, then that you're going to lose games. And that's just a simple matter of fact. Um, I don't think there's like, for us, it's not really anything about what happened in LA. Maybe for them it was, but... We, we're very good at treating every match as an individual uh, kind of state. Even when we play FaZe or when we play the Huntsman, no matter what happened early in the year, it's like, this is what it is now. And we're trying to make the best of winning this match now. And whatever, whatever story is made out of, of the, the potential rematch or, or past matches is not on our end to deal with. Um, where our focus is on winning the game at hand, and that's all we're focusing on. So uh, on that end, I wouldn't really give you much. I mean, there's nothing really to give you there. So, yeah. Overall, uh, big takeaways for you. Like, what are some of the things that you've identified that you know what? Well, let's work on this uh, in our next scrims or in our next practices. Yeah, we we seem to. I mean, one of the things that happen, one of the things that happens a lot when your team plays aggressive and you don't outslay is the com the communication becomes a little he hectic. For like, just kind of a small example, if I'm rushing and I'm killing three guys, my calls are going to be I got him, I got him top L, or I got him here. But if you die, if everyone kind of loses their gunfight, then the communi communication becomes a lot more complicated where you're calling out a lot of different positions on the map where the players who are left alive have to kind of make sense of like what is going on. So it makes things a lot more hectic and things become a lot faster in your brain. Um, so that's one of the things I think is, is kind of good for us to see is like what happens when we start losing these games we're out slaying. Because we didn't lose these games by a lot of points. Like we lost by 30 points the first time and 60 points the second time, even though we got out slay by, by a lot. Uh, which, like, from my standpoint, if my team was out slaying by that much, we'd be winning games by 100, by like 150 points. We'd be 100 point, 100 point clubbing the other team, uh, for lack of a better term. So it's just a matter of like trying to fine tune maybe the communications and really kind of make sure that when we are in those situations, we we prioritize what really needs to be kind of called out. And it's hard because, like, again, we don't really go through these situations very often when we practice online. Um, that that's probably the biggest takeaway is like how do we how can we like manage our practice schedule and our practice regimen to match what we face when we compete in these online tournaments? Is it maybe it's finding a way to play on these servers or playing against these teams in, in ways that will emulate what we face this weekend? Um, maybe it's just, again, trying to maybe get our guys a little rattled up so they, they start communicating at an amount that's just very comparable to what we play when we play online mm. in these events. Uh, but it's really kind of figured out how to, because like exactly for, for me, I've been in Dallas for since I think it's been a month now, maybe a little over a month. So I've been watching every single scrim they've played, and I've been in there with communications, recording games, really trying to make sense of what's going on. And just based on what they said, because I can hear the communication in the game, it's very different. What we played on today was not very much matching how we normally practice. So as a coach, it's my job to try and emulate that. So that's what I'm going to be working on moving forward, I would, I would assume, is to try and really find a way to match our practice schedule, our practice environment to what we just competed on, the environment that is. Speaking of communication, uh, as much as you're willing to tell us, what were the players saying moments after the Minnesota match, if anything? I mean, they were frustrated. Like, obviously, when you lose, you're never happy. Um, given the circumstances, there was a few things that was... Uh, I don't want to say too much again. I don't know exactly to what extent. I don't want to piss off the wrong people, for lack of a better term. But, um, yeah, no, it's, it's just a little aggravation, uh, feeling a little defeated. And it's, it's normal. Like, you should feel that way when you lose. You don't want to be happy, happy. Um, I felt like they took it pretty well. Um, but yeah, just frustrations, just kind of the typical stuff. There's nothing really crazy to happen. We're just discussing, trying to discuss what happened in game as much as we could to try and figure out what we did wrong, what we did right. And we'll, we'll when everyone's cooled down and, and we'll probably take tomorrow off since it's after a tournament and then Tuesday we'll come back in and start talking about 
what we did wrong, what we can improve on, and just try and make it from there and see what we can do to, to fix everything to make it a better environment for the next time we compete.